Hello and welcome guys to another session in the MindGrid. Today we are talking about how to build a very simple app that transmits packets from one port to the other using DPDK and we're going to introduce some very simple concepts in DPDK. Now for those who want to um, quickly get a feel for what DPDK is, it's a data plane development kit from Intel and it is open sourced and um, you can use it to develop high speed communications, uh, packet flow, etc. in your Linux applications. And the way DPDK works is that it bypasses the kernel and the data that comes into the NIC is directly written into the user space using specialized uh, drivers. And these drivers help you communicate really at very high speed. Um, using this um, special DPDK library or drivers. Um, so let's uh, quickly dive into our um, application here. Before we go there though, oops, um, let's look at um, a schematic of what we're going to do today. So the application itself is this DPDK box here, which is plugged into two ports, one is the input port and one is the output port, all it'll do is it'll transmit data uh, from the input port to the output port. Okay, so that's all that's going to happen here and on the other side, we ha so we have two ports that are bound as DBDK ports and there is another two ports that are being just used as TCP dump ports, so all the usual Linux based drivers are bound here. DPDK drivers are bound to these two ports and our DPDK application is plugged into these two ports and the data is flowing from the Linux environment using the standard Linux drivers into this DPDK driver port and then processed by DPDK packets comes back into the Linux environment and gets captured by TCP dump here. So that's the general uh, flow of uh, data here. Now um, when we come into the code I just wanted to do a quick overview of how the code is structured. The code is very, very simple. Um, let's look at the main application. The main application is tiny here. And the first thing is um, we have only two ports. Um, DPDK works on this um, concept of this EAL library, which is uh, the environment abstraction layer. So the environment abstraction layer initializes all the environment from which you know the, everything else comes out. So that's initialized here very first and then we basically are initializing the memory buff pool from which all the uh, packet buffers are created. So the number of buffers times the number of ports, um, cache size and everything else is defined here. If the buffer pool is allocated, great. Then we try to initialize all ports. We only have two ports, so very simple. Uh, we'll initialize the port with the given mbuff pool that was created above. And uh, the ports will all draw from that mbuff pool. Um, and then L core three is what we have chosen to run our main application. So we check if the core is enabled. If not, then it's not gonna run. It's gonna error out. And then we launch the uh, main thread here on core number three. Um, and then the final thing is we just wait for everything to finish. Once it finishes, we end up and we're done. So next we look at two things that we defined here, the port init and the L core main. So port init is next. Let's look at port init. Inside port init, we will just configure the port for rx rings, tx rings, and port configuration. Um, and then we will configure the queues. Now, what are the queues? So uh, what happens is that each port has a queue. Queue is a data structure that is used to communicate between the NIC and the incoming threads. Or on the outgoing side, the same thing, a thread running inside the CPU and the NIC. So the queue is the special data structure that goes between these two, right? There's also a concept called rings, which, which goes between threads and threads, but we don't need them here because our application is very simple. So we just need going to need queues. So we will initialize the RX queue with on this port. We have the ring size that is predefined and the socket ID for this port and 
then the end of pool that we pre-allocated and then we initialize TXQ on this port and queues, there can be many queues so we are picking up queue zero on every port to do this um, application and the ring size, uh, socket ID and then this. Um, so we initialize the RxTX queues. We set promiscuous mode here because we want to see every packet not just specialized packets for the MAC address and then we start the port and then we get the MAC address, we print the MAC address and we reset the stats and we're done. So that is our port initialization routine, very, very simple. Like I said, now we come back to the main and this is the one and only thread that we need to process packets. So what's happening here is that we have, we need number of ports to be two and we just simply run a while loop. In this while loop, we are basically receiving the packet. So the way receive packet works is that you do this function at rx burst and we are receiving the report zero and then we have uh, just the regular initialization here number of buffers um, and then burst size so buffers is basically returned and number rx uh, is the number of packets that have been received so if the number of packets is zero which is unlikely then we go back to the while loop but if the number of packets received is greater than zero, whenever this function returns, it's gonna either give you zero, which means nothing was received, and you go back to the while loop, or you continue on, and you continue on here, you print number of packets, and then we have a way to increment some stats here and print the packets. Now, this is another routine we wrote to do pretty printing of the packets, which we can take a look. But then once we are done, we free the buffers, and we are done with the receive part of it. Now, we will also uh, get some Ethernet stats to see what the, uh, I guess, what was the NIC doing. So we print some NIC stats here. Then we calculate, we look at the Q. We print some Q statistics. Um, and Q and NIC should be roughly the same. And then we also print the receive thread statistics, whatever we received in the thread, which was the eth burst um, API call, right? And then finally, whatever we have received, we're going to transmit on port one. So whatever is received port zero is transmitted to port one. And we are going to transmit to queue number zero, all the buffers that we have received and number of Rx. So we will try to transmit all the packets, but we may not be able to transmit all packets. So if there is less packets transmitted, then we will just print um, how many packets could not be transmitted because these are packets that you know somehow have to be dropped. And so we then um, basically try to uh, free all the remaining buffers. Whatever buffers have not been sent, uh, we will just transmit all of them, right? So from TX to the remaining, to the total was RX and we only ever transmit TX. So we are just gonna free up the remaining buffers. It seems like when you transmit, the buffers are automatically freed for the ones that are physically transmitted. So then we just score free up the remainder and then we are good. So that is all in this transmit function and then print function just takes the m buff and then it calls the usual structures m2d to dissect the uh, packet buffers and then it basically just tries to figure out how much payload there is and then it just prints them. So it prints the source address, destination address and uh, and if you look at it, uh, the Ethernet header is, there is this specialized function which has some predetermined uh, values. So it's able to do those and then it's able to print the payload. And most of this, uh, interestingly, most of the, the standard functions you can even get from ChatGPT. It's pretty standard. ChatGPT understands quite a lot of DPDK. So if you say, you know, I want to pretty print my packet, it's probably going to give you these functions. These are not very special functions that you have to like think a lot about. ChatGPT is able to provide a lot of this DPDK code to you. So that's essentially it. So if you come back to this design, we have now showed that packets received on port zero transmitted to port one and we went through a very basic thread which is L core main and that thread is able to take the packets on the queue, uh, print them and then transmit them and that's about it. So let's look at the make file now. So the make file essentially is the one which I got from hello world and so I've left it as hello world. I just substituted main.c with this simple app that I generated um, and essentially this is the same as the hello world in the example application folder that you find in dpdk right so i'm going to just run make and 
I'm going to do make clean because I've already run make. So if you run make, um, it gives me this one error, which which warning, which is okay, because um, I've used an atomic instead of the int, which is okay. It seems to be working fine. Um, so let me show you my run script. This run script is basically, again, because I copied hello world, it's mostly the same. The cores that I'm going to use basically are using core 0, 1, 2, 3. I want to run my main thread on core 3 and whatever the main, the input thread that does the, you know, housekeeping that probably is the main thread that runs on core 0 probably. And so I've left some extra cores for it. And N2 I think is just memory channels and I have two memory channels in there, which is okay. So it's very simple, not a lot going on here. And if I, um, so before we do this, let me also show you some other things. So I've had to set up DPDK. And so if you don't set up DPDK, some of this is not gonna work for you. So I've exported some of these variables like RT, SDK, which is where my DPDK is installed. My RT target is x86-64 native Linux GCC. And I am going to also tell you about the uh, place where I have uh, IGBUIO installed. So I have to uh, add that driver, IGBUIO, from the DPDK that I have. I've compiled that IGBUIO. And the way you bind it is like this. So I have uh, two ports on which like I showed you, um, these two ports, this port and this port here on the DPDK card, and that I have bound by using this command, and I've bound IGBUIO. This is the DPDK driver, and then um, the other two ports, which is 2800 and 2801, I have bound the IXGB driver. That's where I'll run TCP dump, and then I have set promiscuous mode on, on everything. Uh, pretty much everything that I have, I have promiscuous mode on on DPDK, I have promiscuous mode set on for the other side, and then I've set huge pages, so um, you have to make sure you've turned on kernel huge pages so that before running DPDK, otherwise it's not going to work, because DPDK uses these huge pages, so here's where I show you how many huge pages, so allocate 3024 huge pages by writing this, and then I basically just um, print that, and then I show this dpdk dev bind dot pi dash dash status. It shows you how your ports are bound. So that essentially is how we do this. And then if we go back to the hello world, and we have, like I showed you, I've already run make, so I can just run this, uh, um, and because you have to have um, root privileges. So here you can see that it's already printing. I've not sent any packets because there must be some ARPing going on or something. You can see that there's some communication going on already. And I'm not really sure what these packets are, but these are from the Nix itself. There's no higher level packet flow yet. I've not sent anything and it's already received two packets. Now you can see that we are printing the data stats coming from the queue, and we are also printing stats coming from the thread. And you can see that two packets have been received in the in the queue of the NIC, and two packets also seen from my application. So it's all good. And then now we will start the capture here. So I'm going to start capturing uh, here. I've started capturing, and then from here I can send. Um, so I've sent 20 packets, um, and here you can see 22 packets have been received by the queue, and 22 packets have been received by my app. And if you look here real quick to see what these packets look like, so there's uh, definitely one small packets of 61 bytes and a large packet of 526 bytes. So if I go in here, and if I go to this, and, and just see um, in my replay folder, um, if I see what am I sending, I'm pretty sure I'm sending this DNS port capture. And so it has two packets. This one's uh, 75 bytes and this one's 540 bytes. So if you come here and if you look at it, um, instead of um, 74, uh, what we are seeing is payload is 61 plus maybe um, 12 to 14 bytes, 14 bytes. 
It's 14 by the 75, right? So this is exactly the packet that was being transmitted here. Uh, this first packet, you can see that, you know, the bytes look the same. 000C, all that, all the way up to 0101. And so you can see here, you know, 0101. So that's the first packet. And then this large packet, which is 526 plus, let's say, another 14. That's 540 maybe. So it was this correct? Let's see that here. You come here, that is 540 bytes, right? So that's exactly the packet that is being transmitted um, by the TCP dump here that is being received here into the um, TPDK application. So we have received, and now let's see that we stop this, and you can see that 20 packets were received by the capture side as well. So that have been captured here at this point and these packets are received, turned around and received here. We have captured them. And so um, if you want to look at them, you can look at them, but I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same packets that you have transmitted. Um, and so coming back here, so we have been able to demonstrate that, um, and let's just say for, for sake, send another 20 packets. And so those 20 packets are again received and so on and so forth. So. This is a very simple application. What it shows us is that we have ability to transmit packets using TCP replay. And these packets come in into a port bound into a DPDK driver, IGB UIO driver. The DPDK app then picks up these packets using a queue. These packets are received, printed here, and then transmitted back into port one. Port one then sends it back into the Linux driver, which is bound here. This driver is just the US, is the standard IXGBE driver. And then here TCP dump dumps all the packets back into a PCAP. So from PCAP into a PCAP, and then DPDK here in the middle, displaying all the packets now. Um, the motivation here was just to show a very simple application. It's almost, um, like you could probably have Chad GPT write this. It's so straightforward because all we have is a queue and a simple uh, buffer that receives, transmits back into the transmit queue and the solve that is going on. But this is a sort of a template so that it shows you how to get quickly started. It's very simple. It's extremely simple to write and then you're back up and running. Um, and then once you have this going, this flow going, now you can start to build more interesting apps with this data flow because you have an input packet, you have an output, sorry, you have an input port and output port between them. You have established um, data pattern and then you can start to inject your code and do some interesting stuff. And so um, that's it for this um, video guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, um, let me know what you thought of this and if you want um, to, uh, to um, get some more videos in this series or add some more content, uh, would like to see some other interesting um, stuff in DPDK. Let me know. I'll see if I can find some time to make those. Um, and uh, I will get back to you. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video. Take care and bye-bye.